Okay, so a little introduction about Gabby. She lives and works in Tacoma, Washington. She's a bookbinder and an artist. In 2014, she received her diploma for bookbinding at North Bennett Street School in Boston. Her love for odd materials, storytelling, and well-crafted books are a good combination to producing truly unique books. Gabby's books are included in the collections of the University of Washington, Boston Anthenaeum, Library of Congress, and many more private and public collections across the world. Please welcome Gabby. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for being here on your Saturday. Um, can you see me? Is this working? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I wanted to thank uh, you, Dorothy and Lynn for helping me out today and for PSBA for having me in this talk. Uh, it's going to be all in a slideshow because I find it very uh, seasick like if I just move my laptop around. So I'm going to be showing a slideshow to you instead. And it's going to be in three different parts. Uh, my studio, as it is now, uh, past pictures of this studio and work I have done in this space. So I'm going to just share my screen. OK, uh, this is my dog, Mac. <laughs> I just had to put it in as the title uh, screen. Uh, some background of my studio. I moved into this space in February of 2018. Um, I first used my guest bedroom as my studio because my garage was in really rough shape um, and it just needed a new garage door, new windows, a new roof, insulation, and heat. You know, just the small things for a studio. So uh, that got worked on whenever I moved in and slowly turned into this lovely space that I'm in now. Um, I had a lot of help moving into this space. Uh, Don and Suzanne, who are on this call, helped me uh, do the walls, uh, put the roof up, make it look really nice. And um, yeah, it just made it really homey and lovely. Uh, whenever you enter into my space, you're gonna notice a couple things. Uh, I don't have a picture of Mac right now, but he would be rushing you at the door and wanting all the pets. Uh, there's a ton of house plants in my studio because when my partner moved in with me, he brought two cats and one of the cats really likes to eat plants. So all the house plants slowly became studio plants and it's, it's too much. There's too much plants in here now. <laughs> there can never be too much plants, but there's a lot. Um, and the other thing that I can't show you, because you'd have to be listening, I listen to a lot of music and podcasts in here, and, and they're each for different things. So music, if I really need to concentrate, and then podcasts, if I'm doing the same thing for eight hours straight. Uh, right whenever you walk into the door on your left, there's a converted spice rack that holds a ton of ink, glues. I'll mention this a little later on, but if you can spot the raccoon arm, in there. <laughs> There's a raccoon arm. Um, and I also have like this dog photo shrine that if I'm really close with your dog, they end up on this wall. <laughs> uh, my friend Taylor Cox from Cox Wayne Press keeps her golden press here and a cabinet full of type, which makes my space look very pleasing. And you can see her steamroller print on the wall back there from the Waze Goose, I think two years ago, three years ago. Um, so that's the front door and immediately you'll run into this cut trimmer. I initially thought I would get rid of it because you'll see later on, I have another cut trimmer or board shear here, but I really like this thing. So I'm, I'm keeping it, I love it. Um, it was one of the first pieces of equipment that I bought when I moved here six and a half years ago. Uh, it fits through doors easily and I, I really love it so I, I keep it. Uh, this is my space obviously on the right is my main desk and the dog bed. Uh, this is my Rolly 
uh, shelving unit that if Taylor comes and prints, we can roll it out so she has room to print. And this houses all my cloth, rolls of paper, packing, packing stuff. Uh, there's a couple containers in there with bits of leather and exotic leather. Um, my sewing equipment and foam. And actually that roll, that huge roll that holds all the cloth was the roll that the paper for Waze Goose, a past Waze Goose was on. So I converted it into my uh, thing that holds my cloth. Uh, right next to that shelving unit is my, uh, oh God, I just forgot the word for this. My, my flat files. <laughs> Um, I, this was also one of the first things I got when I moved here. Uh, they were going to throw it in the dump up in Seattle, but I hurry up and took it. I had absolutely no room in my studio apartment, but I made room for this and it holds a ton of leathers, papers, Japanese papers, boards, and here's an image of the leather drawer pulled out. I actually have three, uh, drawers full of leather, like full skins, which is lovely, but I need a place to house them. So I fold them in half with the suede side up and put a piece of Davy board on top. So I can open and close the drawers without anything getting caught or stuck behind there. And also some of the drawers hold multiple pieces of paper. And I learned this from Suzanne where she labels everything and keeps them in folders. So the marbled paper on my left, there's the scraps and there's marbled paper I made and marbled paper I did not make. So this is my Cadillac board shear that I got from Kirsten, Gle uh, Kirsten Gleb. Uh, her, she unfortunately passed away a couple years ago and her brother was trying to get rid of her equipment so I rented a U-Haul van and drove to Ocean Park and picked it up in pieces. There's gonna be a picture later on of this thing in pieces, but I slowly put it together with the help of my partner, Josh, and it's lovely. I cut uh, huge sheets of cardboard paper and cardboard on it. And I finally folded and there's a five gallon PVA bucket under there that, I mean, I kept buying these one gallon things and using them up so quick. So I just said, screw it and got the five gallon <laughs> bucket and it's still lasting me. Uh, this is my book binding book collection that's slowly growing. Um, I visited Jim Crofts last year and I got to see his book binding book collection. It was absolutely lovely and I hope to have one like that one day but it's slowly growing, it's slowly growing. Um, this is a shelving unit that holds more book binding, book art materials. Um, there's a horse skull from Suzanne that's wearing a weird PVA hat. Uh, there's just some glues, some empty jars for mixing paint and this is a close up so you can see my organizing system. I really like weird stuff. <laughs> so there's bones, ribs, and wings in one container. Uh, there's teeth in another container. And it's just whatever macabre thing I could maybe stick on a book one day, I might have it. Uh, this is my. There's a lot going on here, but there's a drying rack that I got last year from my mom. Uh, I've needed a drying rack for a very long time. And you'll see later on where I have dried paper before, but this is a much needed addition to my studio. Uh, right below that drying rack is my uh, vertical plow and some presses on either side. Uh, this is so I had three main equipment right when I moved in. This press, the flat files, and that cut trimmer. And I, I absolutely love this press and it's great size, but it was rough having it at the very beginning because it's moved with me five different times and it's really heavy. 
So you got to take it apart each time you move. And it's been with me everywhere and I'm really happy I have it. It's great size. Uh, this is my, I'm also forgetting the name of this. This is my uh, job backer on loan from Don. Uh, it rounds the spines of books. This is looking up. There's a shelf shelving unit on top that holds a ton of mock-ups that I made either at American Academy of Bookbinding or North Bennett. And it's nice to just pull those down and look at really quickly. Lots of art on the walls. I, I love changing it out every couple months, but I'm also a huge Harry Potter fan. So there's a lot of Harry Potter stuff around. Uh, this is a, a nice little little wall of things that are near and dear to me. Uh, Suzanne calligraphed my name down there in that circle. Uh, Jessica Spring from Springtide Press. We, uh, I helped her set some type for that Fields no Field Notes book down there. Um, some art from my mom, uh, a weird alien sculpture and a hammer that's broken from my Pap Pap shop uh, that has the word treasure written on it. I have no idea why that's written on there, but it was a lovely find in his garage. Uh, these are flat files I got, I think about two years ago, and it's missing a drawer for some reason, but it works out because I can stick uh, book projects in there without worrying about them. Uh, this holds parent sheets of Davy board, 80 and 100 pound, and some more leather. Uh, this bookshelf that's right above those flat files uh, is my mom's work. So some backstory, me and my mom have been journaling back and forth to, together since I was around five or six, like a really long time. And they've slowly grown into huge projects and they're really beautiful. These are mainly her books and she keeps the ones that we write back and forth to each other. But um, I pulled some of them down so you can see them. They're very collage heavy and she usually gives them to me in big moments of my life. And here are some of them. Uh, they're really inspirational and uh, texture heavy. So if I'm stuck on something, I usually just pull one down and they just feel really nice. So it's a, it's a lovely thing to have. Oh, um, this is on top of the flat files. This is just some art. Um, there's some paste paper I did at Suzanne's class like forever ago. Those arches is paste paper. Um, a print from Jessica, the living is a dying trade. Uh, the red framed piece is by Felicia Chow. And the creepy, creepy woman doll head up there with teeth coming out of her face. That has moved with me everywhere and everyone hates it <laughs> that comes to visit, but I enjoy it very much. And it's by uh, Colin Christian. He does really macabre things. Uh, this is my main desk. So what I'm sitting at right now, looking out and I have this gorgeous window that lets in a ton of light. Whenever I moved in, I knew I wanted a lot of natural light. So there's two huge windows, skylights, and just a, a lot of lights around me to make sure I can see everything well. Um, this is right in front of me. So every day I sit down and look at this. I don't shrine altar, I don't know what it is. It's just a ton of things I like to look at every day and it mean a lot to me. Um, of course, skulls and my grandma's ring and a watch my dad made for my mom and just sweet things that I like to look at. Oh, a nutmeg from Jessica, um, a pencil from Don and Suzanne. This is right below the desk. So I don't, I don't have water in here. So I, I fill up jugs of water and bring them out. A heater, cause I like heat on my feet. Uh, weights, sandpaper, drills, hammers. 
also you can't really see it but I have a I don't know if it's good bad habit of putting PVA on either my pants or underneath the desk so it's it's pretty grody or if I have extra paint I don't want to just dump it down the drain so I just start painting my desk <laughs> Um, this is my quick print. I got this while I was, I was living in Boston and I tried to mail it through the mail and in that process the base broke off but I clamped it to the desk and it works just fine. Nothing's aligned so you have to align it every time. You can't trust any of the measurements on there but it works. It heats up. It's great. He's making the dog bed. And whenever you leave, uh, tell your dog I said hi. Um, these are past pictures of my studio. It's going to look a little different. Um, right when I moved in, I didn't have a shed to put my sidecar bike in or gardening tools or my bike. So I just all went in the studio and it looks really nice, but if I'd go riding, just tons of fumes would be in the studio for a while and it wasn't good. It wasn't a good scene. So after I got the shed built, there was room and Taylor had just bought a press. So she moved the press in and that space is filled now. Um, two summers ago, a friend from North Bennett, uh, sent Bookbinding Barbie to my studio. Bookbinding Barbie was on tour of the U.S. to different binderies and she came with these miniature bookbinding tools that were just super sweet and I had to have a little layout picture of her and there's a paring knife down there made by Jeff Peachy that actually works because I had to try it out. Uh, this is that board shear in pieces. You can see the rafters are helping hold up the pieces. I mainly put it together by myself because I I like it was fun. It was it was I had a good time. But the heavier stuff, like putting the tabletop on and the cutter, like the actual blade, uh, Josh had to help me get it up there. But I was going to do it by myself and then no, I was going to throw out my back. Um, I wanted to show a picture of this is in the morning, but also in the evening in the summer, I get these beautiful rainbow uh, rainbows on the wall and floor because I bought these privacy screens off of Amazon. They're alligator print <laughs> privacy screens, but they just make the most beautiful rainbows. Um, this, these are pages from the Beetle book I did a couple years ago. Uh, I did not have my drying rack yet, so you can see that these are dry, drying on top of my oven. These pages were everywhere. They were on my floor, they were outside, and it was a mess, but they dried. Um, these are me putting the aluminum beetles mounting them into the border of the actual book. I would lay them out so I wouldn't mix things up as I was going. Yeah. Uh, this is a process photo of a leather book I did uh, on Animal Farm. And for some reason, if I'm having trouble with the design, I will take a photo with my phone and then I'll look at my phone to see if it's working. So this is one of those pictures. Um, I don't know if it makes it the design smaller on the screen, but I can see the design better. And this is one of those times. Oh, this is a, the sun was hitting the beetle books just right and all the gold was coming out. And it was a, this book was a joy to make. Um, I usually make my edition books in batches of five, so I don't go absolutely crazy. This edition was of 26, so I do five, do the whole thing, finish those five, and then start again on the next five. 
so it's it's new and not the same thing over and over. Uh, this next part are books that I've worked on in the studio. Uh, this is that finished binding of Animal Farm. Um, some of you might not like this, but the illustrations in it were of butchered pigs. And this was a butchered pig head smoking a cigarette. So I mirrored the images using uh, vellum, blind tooling, uh, some black onlays, and the snout is uh, strawberry paper. So it feels super rough because the seeds are still in there. Oh, and uh, the leather of this book is some of my prized leather. Uh, I couldn't go to England while I was at North Bennett. So my teacher, Jeff Altapeter, said he would bring me back some leather. And I just said, just look for the weirdest leather you can find. And he brought back this diseased goat skin for me. And he said he wasn't going to show me at first because he was going to keep the skin for himself because it just looked so cool. And all the little blotches, I don't know what was up with this goat, but I, it must have had a hard life, but it has a beautiful skin. <laughs> uh, this is a leather binding I did for my book dealer, Ian Kahn at Lux Mentis Booksellers. Uh, it's called Death of the Poets. And that lovely organic border is made out of cabbage paper. You can get it. So that strawberry paper and cabbage paper, you can get at Hiromi. I think it's Hiromi Papers, but they usually go to the guild, the standards meetings and have a booth there. Oh, the end papers were actually a mess up because the end papers were matte-like, but then they got wax put on top of it and it made it look really organic and like veins, like a flashlight holding, holding a flashlight under your skin and seeing all the veins. And it just made the coolest effect and it was totally by ac accident. Uh, this is a, the open book I did for an open set competition at American Academy of Bookbinding. Um, this is Shipwreck by Falconer, and I did a, a leather binding, but I cut out the ship and then I stuck it onto the leather before I covered it and I paired it so everything was flat against each other. There was no raised parts anymore. And that's how you get this effect. And actually the squiggly lines of the ship were, uh, weren't supposed to happen because whenever I glued out the ship, the, the leather just blew up. And I knew this was gonna happen, but I didn't know it was gonna happen that bad. But actually I really like how it turned out. Uh, this is a close up of the spine. I cut everything out by X-Acto knife. This is the set book I did for the open set competition at AAB. And it was a letter to William Blake. And the brass piece I made is supposed to look like a wax stamp on a, le on a letter. And it's a little clasp. This was my first miniature binding I did. And, uh, they're really hard to do. <laughs> uh, everything is just so tiny and uh, I like working on large scale to know what I'm doing, but it worked out. This book is called The Book of Fay, and this is uh, abalone shell, abalone, abalone shell, uh, gold jeweler wire, and chicken feet leather is the blue stuff. The end papers and fly leaves are the botanical prints by Velma Bulliard. And I got to make this sweet clamshell box for it with a ribbon pull that pulls out the book. And since the abalone shell sticks up, I had to create a shelf on the other side to make sure that shell doesn't get damaged and the book still stays in place when closed. 
this is that beetle book I was talking about earlier with a hard name. <laughs> um, this is cave paper with a buffalo uh, leather foredge and spray painted beetle. Um, I don't have a, my quick print isn't large enough for this die. So I went up to Duckabush Bindery and asked Dave to help me out because he has a quick print or a stamping machine that's large enough for the die. Um, all the pages are painted with an acrylic and methyl cellulose wash and printed at Springtide Press. And the beetles are made out of aluminum and alcohol ink. Um, I wrote seven of the stories. There's a total of 11. I wrote seven and the four others are written by Poe, Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, oh God, Aesop's Fables and, and you know, that one guy, Darwin. <laughs> Uh, I usually do a design binding of one of my artist books of one of the editions. And this is my beetle book, fancy book. <laughs> um, these are real emerald jewel beetle wings and it has a leather clasp. Um, the leather on the spine pops off. You can see better in this still but the leather pops off and the beetle wings change every way you look at them. And it was, it was a beautiful thing. This was also a, I'll go back to this image. Um, the title of this book, I tried to stamp it on the already covered book, like just put the die on top of the leather and squish it in the press. But since the boards were chamfered, sanded down, the die, didn't work. <laughs> Only a couple of the letters worked out. So I had to cut out the leather of the title because it just looked terrible. And so I figured out a way to put a flat piece of the calf leather, put the title in, wet it out a ton, wet the leather out a ton, and then smash it for like two weeks or something. And then I used that label stuck it in as a uh, inlay and you can't even tell now it looks totally fine but it was a it worked it worked out um i usually don't do prints but i did a tiny bunny print exchange uh this past summer and this is a lino cut i did of a moon rabbit and it was really fun. I want to do more lino printing. The whisko whiskers are great. Uh, this is my newish, newest artist book called Blight by uh, the poem is by Ralph Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson. And it's about climate change. And this uncanny thing happened while I was making this book. I already knew I was doing this poem and I took the photos at Owen Beach. But then a couple months later, they announced that they were gonna close the beach down for uh, conservation region reasons because of erosion and the tides getting too high. So this book felt even more important to make. So um, this was also printed at Springtide Press. The I did photo transfers for the images onto Japanese paper. Um, I'll go back one so you can see there's these vertical varnished borders. And as you flip through the book, they slowly go down. And I meant it as like tide or erosion, but you can see it going down a little bit and it, and it amounts to nothing. So uh, he was talking about this in 1842 and we're still seeing it. Oh, and I uh, painted with wash on the borders on the outside. This is a detail shot of that. This is my newest, newest artist book that I did for Science Stories. 
Um, it's called Pangolin Pandemic. And uh, a bunch of us gathered in January of 2020. And you could either work with a scientist or pick something from the Slater Natural History Museum. And I was drawn to the taxidermied pangolins. So because of their scales and their print, I knew nothing about their background history, but I was intrigued. So I went back and looked up stories about them and their incredibly poached mammal and need a lot of help. But then the pandemic hit and people were saying that the pangolin might have caused the, the COVID-19. They're still not sure, but there's a ton of stuff on it about wet markets and how pangolins are treated. And this was that book. So there's a lot going on. It's about poaching and the pandemic. And it's a story about, the images are a story of a pangolin starting out as alive. This is the second page where the pangolin is in a defensive curl. And then it ends with the pangolins being descaled. And it's a, it's a sad book, um, but I wanna show awareness to what these creatures are because they're totally harmless and their only defense is curling up. So um, the, it's an edition of six and all of the collages are made out of paper, cloth and wallpaper. And I just love this shot. I told, I was showing Josh my presentation and he's like, why are you showing this? And I was like, well, look at it. It's so pretty, it looks like a fountain. But this is a montage sur on glaze binding or stub binding and it lets everything open really flat and lovely. And that's why this picture's in there because you are book people. <laughs> Uh, this is a detailed shot of the cover. The pangolin scales come up. It's made out of vellum and the paint is alcohol ink and there's gold underneath the scales to add a little shine. Oh, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, Gabby, that was so wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, oh man. Okay, before we unmute people and uh, we will we'll run through the chat here. I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> I hope everybody did. And your, and your, I have to say your photos are just, they're wonderful. So thank you. Really good photos. Yeah, and that helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh. Okay, if somebody really likes your board shear. <laughs> oh yeah. Brass. Clasp, brass, oh, try to say that fast. Brass, brass. clasp. <laughs> oh, thank you, everybody. Yeah, lots of really beautiful, nice comments. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay, I had this question too about the quick print. I don't know what that little gadget is. Um, I guess I can lean you over right here. It's this machine, and you put a die. So that's my blight dye. Okay. And you, you put it on and you turn it on and it heats up super hot. And you put foil down here. And it's just basically a, a big stamper. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. And yeah. so you did that into the le into the leather or into the foil? Uh so the le leather is below and then it's, the foil on top and then you stamp the foil into the leather. Foil into the, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. I saw, can you explain stub binding? Okay. I don't know if I can, I think I have to show you, but basically it's a- Yeah, when they're handy that you can show us? Okay. Uh, no. No, no. <laughs> no <okay. laughs> but basically it's a sheet of paper you put a hinge on the back and so the hinge is what you're sewing on and not the paper so you tip on this hinge and then you fold the hinge up to create your sewing uh structure okay sounds like a workshop in making <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had questions about the uh, the book about the poet's book. Did someone else do the interior of that book? 
Oh, Death of the Poets, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she there was a text block already made and- She like, asked you to do the cover. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and the shipwreck book, was that, you said Yeah, that, that was already a text made that I did not do and I put a cover on it. Yeah, okay. Cover. Uh, Lucia asked, "How uh, would you talk about how you deal with problems that come up?" <laughs> <laughs> I walk away for a while because it's just too much at the moment, and then I will either call friends, people that I look up to, and be like, "This is the situation. I need help. Can you help me?" And talking it out helps a lot. And I mean, the main thing is to walk away and not work on it right whenever you see it, because that's whenever you're already like uh, twitchy, <laughs> so it might not work out. So walking away is a good thing. And I, I see that if I run into a problem, it actually works out okay at the end. Like maybe I can see my fix, but if I show it to people, they don't see it. Oh, yeah, sure. No. Yeah. Oh, somebody would like to see the pang. Do you have the pangolin book? Um, can you, can yeah. you like open some pages and? Sure thing. And I can show you what I've been, the mock ups I've been working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoops. So you said that was collage. So I was curious, is, are those, is that fabric? What is that? Yeah, it's a uh, fabric paper and old wallpaper. It's beautiful. Oh. So one thing I did not, so here's a, a thing that happened as I was working on it. I didn't think of this at the beginning, but the um, cloth rubs against each other. So, uh, adding these slip sheets helps, but I'm trying to find a way to uh, put an adhesive on here so that, because it's mainly just one or two of the scales that rub off, it's the wallpaper mm -hmm. that does. So I did not account for that when I first made it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this is a one of a kind book, right? Uh, there's going to be six of them. Are oh, you going to make six? Yeah. Did you write the text? No, the text, oh, I should have said, is by a monk in the 1300s that wrote about the bubonic plague. And it sounds like it was written in 2020. Wow. So that's why I added it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, thank you for showing us that. Yeah. yeah. Like the binding. You can see the stub. Everything's sewn right here. Yeah. Well, we just, we all want to see that in person, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. We've got to, let's see, move along here. Um, uh, someone wants to know where did you get your brass clasp? made me oh you made it <laughs> yeah i really oh. love working with metals so oh. i have a ton of brass and i use a jeweler saw to cut everything out and yeah i either mount them with the scooch and pins or super glue okay all right great thank you so much um i think we're going to let's see uh that's the uh, end of our official presentation. 